every single year there is a contest where each country selects six students all under the age of 20 and sends them to a location to compete in a mathematics contest. And this mathematics contest is called the International Mathematical Olympiad, also known as the IMO. The first one took place in 1959 in Romania. In order to succeed in the Olympiad, you have to be able to solve hard math problems. And a lot of people feel like if they can't compete in the Olympiad, they can't make it, they can't cut it. That's simply not true. These problems are really tough and they will challenge you. I look at these problems and I have to think pretty tough. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at some of the questions from the Olympiads and we're gonna go ahead and work one out completely from start to finish. We're gonna work through an Olympic level math question from one of these exams. Here is the sixth International Olympiad from 1964 and look at problem number two, how interesting that looks. Suppose A, B, and C are the sides of a triangle. Prove that, and we have that inequality there. So lots of fun, right? It looks like a problem that you might be able to do. A lot of the problems feel that way. Like when you first see them, you think they're easy, and sometimes they are. Sometimes they're not that bad, but sometimes there's some clever tricks that are involved that you just don't see. All right, so here is the test we're going to look at. This is the very first international Olympiad that took place in 1959 in Romania. Let's go ahead and read number two, and then we're gonna work through it super, super carefully so you can see what it takes. And this is a good one because I feel like many people might be able to figure this out. For what real values of x is this true, given a equals the square root of two, a equals one, and a equals two, where only non-negative real numbers are admitted for square roots. So we have the square root of x plus the square root of two x minus one, plus the square root of x minus the square root of 2x minus 1 equals a. You notice already there's like a weird difference of squares thing happening here inside the roots. Okay, let's go ahead and write the problem down and work it out in its entirety. Okay, so I have written the question down again, and let me just explain what it's asking so we can try to solve this. So the question gives us an equation, and it wants us to find the values of x for which this equation is true, given different values of a. So for example, when a is the square root of two, what is the solution to this equation? When a is one, what is the solution to this equation? And when a is two, what is the solution to this equation? So rather than just plug these numbers in and try to solve three different equations, let's go ahead and try to manipulate this to see if we can get something a little bit more simple looking. To do that, we need to eliminate the square roots. So there is a super powerful formula that says if you have a plus b quantity squared, this is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So you can think of this as your a and this is your b. And what you do is you square both sides to eliminate these roots. So squaring the first one, the square root goes away. So we get x plus the square root of 2x minus 1 plus, and then we have a 2 from the formula, and then we're multiplying these. So square root x plus square root 2x minus 1 square root x minus square root 2x minus 1. And then plus, and then we square the last one so the square root goes away. I'm running out of room. x minus square root 2x minus 1. And this is equal to a squared, right? It's all equal to a squared. So this one's going to cancel with this one. It's going to give us more room. So we've got x plus x. So that's going to be 2x. These we can combine under the same square root. So we have a giant square root. Then we have this piece here x plus square root 2x minus 1, and then we have x minus square root 2x minus 1. Really nice. And this is equal to a squared. This is the difference of squares, right? This is a plus b, a minus b. So this is 2x plus 2 square root. When you work this out, you just get a squared minus b squared. So it's going to be x squared minus, and then when you square the square root, it goes away. And this is the really cool part. Watch what happens here. This is 2x plus 2. This is going to be x squared minus 2x plus 1. Right? Because you distribute the negative 1 here. And then this is x minus 1 squared. Like this in parentheses. And when you take the square root of that, you get the absolute value. So you get... 
All right, so now we're here. So now we have to deal with the absolute value. So let's talk about this absolute value because you need to know the definition in order to understand the next step. So the absolute value of x minus one is equal to a piecewise function, okay? It's equal to x minus one, or rather, yeah, x minus one, let's do it this way. If x minus one is, let's say, greater than zero, and it's equal to minus x minus one, if x minus one is less than or equal to zero. So that's the definition of absolute value. If it's positive, you just drop the absolute value. If it's zero or it's negative, you can put a negative sign here. One small detail is this equal to part. It doesn't matter where you put it. I did this problem already prior to making this video and I did it the different way. I put the equal to part here and it made it a little bit more confusing at the end. So that's why I'm doing it this way. And you should keep that in mind whenever you're looking at other people's solutions for these types of questions. A lot of times the person who is presenting the solution has already worked it out. So this is not my first solution. The first time I did this, I did it a little bit differently and I got the same answer. Okay, so let's take cases. So in the first case, we have x minus one uh, greater than zero. We can do uh, this case first or this case second. Let's, let's do this one first. Let's do this one first. So if x minus one is less than or equal to zero, in this case, the absolute value of x minus one is just negative parentheses x minus one. So we get two x plus two negative x minus one equals a squared. So now we can distribute this two. This is gonna be a negative two x this can be a positive, a positive two, and that's equal to a squared. Okay, so this is gonna be a squared equals two. But what, what do we know about x here, right? x is less than or equal to one, right? And we're told that a squared is two. Well, what does that mean? Well, let's think about each case here. So we've got a couple cases. So a equals square root of two. That's gonna work, right? That's gonna work because if a is the square root of two, we're gonna get the square root of two squared equals two. So this is going to be valid for x less than or equal to one. However, if you look at the original question, there is a domain restriction, right? You have a square root here. Things that are inside square roots must be greater than or equal to zero. So we can set two x minus one greater than or equal to zero. So two x greater than or equal to one. So x greater than or equal to one half. And that's true throughout because of this domain restriction, which is implied by the given equation. So in this case, this is going to be true, right? We're going to have, um, if a is the square root of two, this is all valid as long as x is bigger than one half and, or equal to and less than or equal to one. So the answer to part a is going to be the interval one half comma one. If you look at the other choices, they're not going to work. For example, if a is one, you can't plug in one here, right? It's not going to work. You'll get one squared equals two. Likewise, if a is two, you'll get uh, four equals two, so it's not gonna work. So this equation, when a is equal to the square root of two, has this solution set. Now let's do the case when x minus one is greater than zero. So if that's true, let's look at each case. Well, if x minus one is greater than zero, the absolute value of x minus one is just x minus one. So we get two x plus two times x minus one equals a squared. So we get 2x plus 2x minus 2 equals a squared. So we get 4x minus 2 equals a squared. I'm running out of room, so I'm going to get another sheet of paper. Okay, let's continue. So here's solving for x. We can add 2 and divide by 4. So we get x equals a squared plus 2 over the number 4. And now let's think about each case, right? Let's think about what's going on. We're told that x is bigger than 1. That's our condition. And so if a is the square root of 2, that shouldn't work, but let's check. If we plug it in, we get x equals square root of two squared is two, so we get two plus two over four. We get one, bigger than one. That's a contradiction, that doesn't work, right? So that's good. What about when a is equal to one? Well, if a is equal to one, we get x equals one plus two over four, which is equal to three fourths, but that has to be bigger than one. That's also a contradiction, right? Because that doesn't work, right? Uh, because x is bigger than 1, it can't be equal to 3 fourths. And last but not least, we have when a is 2, we get x equals 2 squared plus 2 over 4, 6 over 4, which is equal to 3 over 2, which is bigger than 1. So when a is 2, we get x equals 3 halves. So let's write down all the answers. So for a, it's going to be 1 half comma 1. For b, it's going to be no solution. 
And for C, it's going to be x equals 3 halves. And that would be the answer to this particular question. So you can see now how hard these Olympic level uh, math questions can be. I mean, it is really, really no joke. And it takes a lot of time. So imagine how smart these people are, these people who compete in these international math Olympiads. So if you're watching this video and you're watching it in 2023, uh, we haven't hit the Olympiad yet for this year. So this year, I believe it's in Japan. I, I think it's Chiba, Japan. I'd have to double check. I should have double checked, but I'm pretty sure because I was just looking at the website. I think it's called Chiba where it's located. And um, really amazing, right? Six people from each country are gonna go and compete in this contest. So a really elite contest, it's you know the Olympics. The Olympics are elite. And I just thought I would make this video to show you what it takes, right, to solve uh, one of these Olympic level math questions pretty nuts. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and yeah, that's it. Until next time, good luck, take care, and thanks for being a subscriber.